Hello, welcome to our online service here at Hope Lutheran Church for this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Today is July 12th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Today we are going to be looking at how God's kingdom grows. And we're going to see that God grows his kingdom by casting his word out into the world. But how effective is God's word? Well, today, as the theme for our service says, we're going to see that God's word works. It may not always work as we expect it to. It may not always work according to our timetable, but God's word works, and it always accomplishes what he sends it out to do. Today, we're going to begin our service by singing the hymn, Speak, O Savior, I Am Listening.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen.
Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 55. God's word accomplishes what it sets out to do. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. Let the wicked one abandon his way and the sinful one his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord so he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will freely forgive. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. And your ways are not my ways. This is the Lord's declaration. For as heaven is higher than earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For just as rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth, and making it germinate and sprout, and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please, and will prosper in what I send it to do. This is the word of our God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 65.
trees and stony landscape of the heart. second scripture reading is from Paul's first letter to the Christians in Corinth. We read from chapter 3 as Paul describes how he and others work together to spread God's word. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? They are servants through whom you believed, and each has the role the Lord has given. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's co-workers, you are God's field, God's building. According to God's grace that was given to me, I have laid a foundation as a skilled master builder, and another builds on it. But each one is to be careful how he builds on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than what has been laid down. That foundation is Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for today is written in the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 13. We hear Jesus' parable of the sower and the seed. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, while the whole crowd stood on the shore. And then he told them many things in parables, saying, Consider the sower who went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it didn't have much soil, and it grew up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it. Still other seed fell on good ground and produced fruit, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times what was sown. Let anyone who has ears listen. So listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one sown along the path. And the one sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. But he has no root and is short life. When distress or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. Now the one sown among the thorns, this is one who hears the word, but the worries of this age and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown on the good ground, this is the one who hears and understands the word, who does produce fruit and yields, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty times what was sown. This is the gospel of our Lord.
Does God's word really work? I know that that's the theme of our service today. And I know that that is the lesson that each of our scripture readings today very clearly teaches us. I also very clearly understand that the efficacy of scripture, the fact that God's word works, is one of those foundational teachings of confessional Lutheran Christianity. But is it true? Does God's word really work? I guess I wouldn't be terribly surprised if sometimes as you look at the world in which we live, you have your doubts. I know as I look out at the world in which we live, I see things that would seem to indicate to me that God's word 
doesn't always work or doesn't work at least the way I think it should. I mean, I see a culture that is not just inching away from God and what God wants. I see a culture that is running headlong as far from God and as far away from God wants as it possibly can. I see people who have no love for God and therefore also have no love for their neighbor and are expressing that in the violence that unfortunately is bringing waves of violence to our cities including Chicago and New York and even here in Louisville. I see fewer and fewer people who are even willing to nominally call themselves Christians. I see more and more young people who identify themselves as nuns, people who have no religious affiliation whatsoever. I see churches that are struggling to survive. I see Christian schools that are closing. It would seem that there's lots of evidence that God's word doesn't always work. And yet God's word to us through the prophet Isaiah still stands. It's that word that we heard in our first scripture reading today. Just as rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth, making it germinate and sprout and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. God's word, according to his own promise, works. It may not always work as we expect it to work. It may not always work according to our own timetable. But God's word works. That's his promise. And that is the lesson that Jesus teaches us today in his parable of the sower and the seed. It's a very familiar parable, I think, for most of us. And today it's going to show us that, yes, God's word does work. And because God's word does work, our task is simply to go out and keep on scattering that seed. Now, in order for us to understand Jesus' parable here, we really need to understand what agriculture was like at the time that Jesus lived. You know, farmers today have very precise ways of planting their seed. They have precision planters that will plant seeds at a precise depth in the soil, spaced out at a precise distance, and they can put the seed exactly where they want. They don't have to worry about their seed winding up in places where they don't want it because they can very precisely put it where they want it. Well, farmers at Jesus' time did not have precision planters. They had a bag of seed and they had their two hands. And the way they went about uh, sowing their seed in their fields was they would take their bag of seed, they would grab a handful of seed, and they would just scatter it along the ground as they were walking along. Now, of course, a farmer wants as much seed as possible to grow, and so he's going to do everything he can to get as much of that seed to fall on ground where it has a chance to grow. But when you can't precisely place each seed where you want it, inevitably some seed is going to fall in places where you don't want it to fall. Some seed is going to fall on that hard packed earth that forms the pathway around the field. And when seed falls there, well, birds are going to come and get it and steal it away. The seed has no chance of growing there. Sometimes the seed may, grow, may fall on ground that has a thin layer of soil on top of a layer of rocks. Now, that soil, as it sits there in the sun, is going to be pretty warm. And so the seed that falls there might grow up really quick, but it's not able to put down any roots because there's that rock, a layer of rock right underneath the soil. And so as the sun continues to beat down on the plant, it can't get the moisture that it needs. It has no roots, and so it starts to wither and die. And that seed doesn't actually produce fruit either. And then there's other seed that falls where there are thorns. And again, the farmer doesn't want the seed to fall on thorns, but it's going to happen if you're just scattering seed by hand like that. And when the seed falls among the thorns, well, the thorns, they're going to choke out the seed, and the seed's not going to be able to grow. 
but there will be seed that will fall on ground where it does grow. There will be seed that falls on the good ground that's not packed down like the path, that doesn't have that layer of rock beneath a thin layer of soil. Ground where the seed can sprout and put down roots and grow up. Ground where there won't be thorns to choke it out. And when the seed lands on that ground, it produces a crop. Produces a crop sometimes 30 times what was sown, sometimes 60 times what was sown, sometimes 100 times what was sown. And before we move on to talk about the meaning behind Jesus' parable, I want us to just think about a couple of things about just the way the seed would work in a cultural setting. When the seed falls on the path and fails to grow on the path, is it the seed's fault that it failed to grow on the path? No. It really is kind of the path's fault because the path was so hard that the seed was not able to grow there. Same thing with the rocky soil and with the thorns. When the seed falls on the rocky soil and fails to grow, when it falls on the thorns and fails to grow, is it the seed's fault? No, it's not. It's the rock's fault. It's the thorn's fault. Now, when the seed falls on good soil, is it to the soil's credit that the seed grows? I want you to think about this carefully because we are so used to these miraculous things that God does that we call natural processes that we sometimes lose sight of the fact that it really is miraculous that these things happen at all. And one of those things is the fact that a seed can fall on soil and germinate and grow. When the seed falls on the good soil, it's not really to the soil's credit that the seed grows. When the seed grows, it really is a testimony to the gracious and miraculous power of God that caused that seed to grow. And so while it may not be the, soil, the seed's fault when it doesn't grow, it is certainly to God's glory when it does. Now, of course, Jesus here is not just telling us this story to teach us about first century agriculture. As he explained to his apostles later on, he's really talking about how his kingdom grows as his word goes out into the world. And as Jesus interprets these four different kinds of soil, I think it's really important that we understand what Jesus is talking about here. Because it would be very easy for us to conclude that as Jesus describes the, this interpretation of these four different kinds of soil, it would be very easy for us to conclude that Jesus here is talking about four different kinds of people. But that's not really the case. And the reason I know it's not that Jesus isn't talking about four different kinds of people is that he includes in his four different types of soil good soil. And if Jesus here were talking about four different kinds of people, he couldn't have good soil. Because scripture repeatedly shows us that no human heart is on its own hospitable habitat for the word of God. Every human heart, including our own, is by nature a hard, cold stone that is completely inimical and hostile to the word of God. So if Jesus here were talking about four different kinds of people, including a kind of person who is, who is receptive on his own to the word of God, well, that wouldn't work here. So what is Jesus talking about if he's not talking about four different kinds of people? Well, what he really is talking about here is four different reactions to the word of God. And these are reactions that every human being is capable of. They're reactions that you and I also are capable of. Someone may have all four of these different kinds of reactions to God's word throughout their lifetime. I think if we all are honest and look back on our own lives, we can see all four of these different kinds of reactions to God's word in our own lives. So what are these different kinds of reactions? Well, the first is the seed that fell on the hard path. Jesus tells us that that seed is when anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, 
The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. When someone hears God's word and either doesn't understand it or doesn't want to understand it or refuses to understand it, then Satan is right there to grab that seed of the word and take it away. This is the kind of reaction that you and I, all of us, had to God's word by nature when we were born. Every last one of us when we were born were like this hard path. Our hearts were hard. We wanted nothing to do with God's word, and they could not on their own receive God's word and believe it. Now, I see this kind of reaction also in people who are perhaps very wise and smart in, a lot of, in, in various areas, and when they hear God's word, their intellect, their human intellect, and their human understanding simply will not allow them to believe that what God is telling them is true, and so they reject it. That's one kind of reaction to God's word. The second one is the uh, seed that was sown on rocky ground. This is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, but he has no root and is short-lived. When distress or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. I unfortunately see this kind of reaction to God's word sometimes among people who have bought into what's called the prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel is a teaching that says that when you become a believer in Jesus, everything in your life is going to be wonderful. Because God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be prosperous. God does not want you to have any trouble. That's the kind of message that can make people very, very excited to be Christians because it, it promises that their life is going to get better and better and better when they follow Jesus. But unfortunately, you cannot be a Christian in this world without facing consequences for being a follower of Jesus. If you follow Jesus, you are going to face persecution. If you follow Jesus, you are going to suffer. And when those inevitable things come into a person's life, when they are caught up in that prosperity gospel, that leads to a lot of disappointment. That leads to a lot of questions about whether God really loves them. That leads to a lot of questions about whether or not they really have strong enough faith in order to receive these blessings that supposedly God has promised them. And so their faith withers away. Maybe you even experienced this kind of reaction to God's word when you were new in the faith and had to come to terms with the fact that following Jesus was not going to be easy. Then there's the third reaction. Now, the one sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this age and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. I think all of us can relate to this kind of reaction to God's word, because we all, to some degree, have found ourselves distracted away from God's word by the worries of this life, by the cares of this world, by the allure of wealth, which promises us a good life here, but causes us to lose sight of what's most important, and that is our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus. Sometimes this kind of reaction is fatal to a person's faith. They are so overwhelmed by the cares of this world, so overwhelmed by a desire to gain the things of this world that their faith withers and dies. Those are all three very negative reactions to God's word, which leads us to ask again, does God's word work? Now I want you to remember what we talked about when we talked about the seed in an agricultural setting. Was it the seed's fault when it didn't grow on the path or in the rocky soil or in thorns? No, it wasn't the seed's fault. So does it show some deficiency in God's word when God's word is preached and some people reject it? And some people are led away from it because of their disappointment with having to deal with the consequences of being a follower of Jesus. Or when the cares of this world choke out a person's faith. That's not a deficiency in the word. 
that is unfortunately testimony to a tremendously frightening and horrible power that we sinful human beings have. Every last one of us sinful human beings has the power to look straight in the eyes of the Almighty God and say no. God in his word gives to us the forgiveness of sins which Christ won for us on the cross. He gives to us the hope of eternal life in Christ. We as sinful human beings have the horrible, terrifying power to say to the Almighty God, no, I don't want your gift. No, I don't need your gift. So does that mean that we shouldn't even try to sow the seed? Of course not. Look at the farmer. The farmer knows that some of his seed is going to fall on the path. He knows that some of the seed is going to fall on rocky soil. He knows that some of the seed is going to fall among the thorns. Does that keep him from sowing his seed? Absolutely not. Because he knows that there also will be seed that falls on good ground. And that makes it worth it for him to keep sowing his seed. And Jesus tells us that that, good, that seed that falls on good ground, well, this is what it signifies. The one sown on good ground, this is the one who hears and understands the word, who does produce fruit and yields, some 100, some 60, some 30 times what was sown. Here's where we see God's word working. And we know that God's word works because this miraculous reaction to God's word has taken place in our hearts. In spite of the fact that we, by nature, were nothing but the hard path, in spite of the fact that we, by nature, were absolutely hostile to both God and his word, God still planted his word in our hearts, and that word sprouted and took root and grew. By the miraculous power of God, God took us, who were completely turned off to him and enabled us to believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, to look to Jesus as the one who lived a perfect life in our place, to look to Jesus as the one who suffered on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins, to look to him as our only Savior and to place all of our confidence in him and to know that through him all of our sins have indeed been forgiven and that through faith in him we will spend eternal, have, enjoy eternal life with him in heaven. This is not to our credit as if somehow we were good soil that caused this seed to grow in our hearts. No, just as it is a testimony to the gracious and almighty power of God that any seed can grow in any ground, so it is a testimony to the almighty power of our gracious God that the seed of his word has grown in our hearts. And it gives us the confidence to continue to sow the seed. Because we know that it is not going to be not going to happen in every case that this word is going to be rejected. It is not going to happen in every case that people are going to be disappointed by the word of God. It is not going to happen in every case that the word of God is going to be choked up by the worries of this world and the deceitfulness of wealth. No, by God's grace and through his miraculous power, working through that word, working through the power of his Holy Spirit in that word, that word is going to take root in people's hearts. It is going to germinate. It is going to grow. It is going to produce fruit. People are going to believe. Yes, God's word works. Does it always work in the way that we expect it to work? No. Does it always work according to our own timetable? No. But will it work? You bet it will. Because we have God's promise that just as the rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth, making it germinate and sprout and providing seed to sow and food to eat. So my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please 
and prosper in what I send it to do. Amen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please join me now in confessing our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people. Grant to us all things needful and beneficial, and keep from us all things harmful. Holy Lord, mighty God, you are the strength of the hills and the hope of the ends of the earth. Give to our hearts your perfect peace, that we may not be anxious nor live in fear, but rest all our hopes, dreams, and desires upon your merciful goodness. Holy Lord, mighty God, you send forth water upon the earth that it may bring forth abundant fruit and feed our bodies with all that we need. Help us to be wise and faithful in the use of the rich bounty of the earth, that the poor may be supplied, and that we never fail to give thanks to you for all you have given us for this body and life. Holy Lord, mighty God, your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish your purpose in sending it. By your Holy Spirit, make our hearts good soil for your word to be planted that we may give evidence of a sturdy faith and show forth in our lives the good works you have called us to do. Holy Lord, mighty God, your spirit accompanies the witness of your people who speak your word before the world. Grant success to the missionary and mission planter and to every pastor and church worker, that those who hear may believe and those who believe may bear the good fruit of faith in their lives. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have given power to the nations and those who govern to act for the, for the good of your people. Bless our president, the Congress, our governor, and all those elected and appointed to lead us, that justice may prevail and your people may be free to live at peace with all people. Holy God, mighty Lord, you know how weak and frail we are. Give to those afflicted in mind, body, or soul, soul the fullness of your healing grace, that according to your will they may be restored to health. Hear us for all those suffering or recovering from the pandemic's rages, for those who have requested our prayers, and for those we name in our hearts. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have granted us great riches and gifts. Keep our hearts from being overburdened by the things of this mortal life, whether in time of plenty or in time of want. Deliver us from persecution and sustain us from all tribulation, that our hearts may ever be fixed upon the true treasure of your grace. Accept the tithes and offerings we bring as part of our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness. Holy God, mighty Lord, your word endures forever. Keep us from being tossed about by every wind of change and chance, and help us to endure upon the firm foundation of your word and sacraments. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you so much for being with us here today. God's richest blessings go with you as you go out and serve your Lord and your neighbor this week. God be with you till we meet again.